YouTube channel, I think. Are we? We should check. I think we are. Uh, we've got Lower Spirit, Times Red Box reporters, here uh, to look ahead to PMQs. Lower, how are you? Hi, Matt. I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm oh, very good. I'm oh, very good. This is the busiest the studio's ever been. It's nice. It's, it's cozy. good. This is exciting. The, the COVID seems like a very long time ago <laughs> uh, because a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Beale, a uh, politics teacher from Viner's School in West London, got in touch with this the bingo card. Uh, that the politics students uh, fill in every week while they listen to PMQs Unpacked. So Mr Beale's here. Morning, Mr Beale. Good morning. Uh, and you've brought some students with us. So tell us, who have we got? Who have we got? I have. Here we have Kira. Say hello. Hello. Annabelle. Morning, Kira. Hello. Hello, Annabelle. And William. Hello. Morning, William. So, uh, Mr Beale, explain how your your bingo this bingo card works i'm just about to tweet a link to it so if you want to have a look you can people can play Absolutely. along at home. they should play along at home this is more just more than a bingo card we start off with the uh, pmqs every wednesday our, we're very fortunate that our timetable allows that we can listen to pmqs it fits absolutely it does so we uh do a prediction with the bingo card beforehand of what we might think might come up and then we started to uh, note down the questions to see what kind of common themes keir starmer's going to lead with in his question whether he's going to stick with the same six or, or split them up. And then because politics, uh, studying at A-level, is all about the synoptic links that you can find in the course uh, between all the different concepts, I've got all the concepts down there for them to draw links on. And then if anyone's not able to listen to it live like we are, they then listen to the uh, Times Red Box politics podcast and uh, listen to your and Tim's uh, feedback as well. So they can have extra analysis they can add. And then at the bottom there, they give a little five-star rating of the performance of uh, Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer. To be clear, it's the, it's the rating them rather than us. Very pleased to see you've got the new red box logo on the. On I the, know, it's really on it. You've, you've updated that. Um, uh, so, tell what, Annabelle, talk us through the uh, on this the PMQ synoptic links. What are the things that you're looking out for, which might come up at PMQs? Uh, so, my PMQ bingo card contains the new migration bill, um, the Sue Gray report. Uh, Human rights. Um, oh, the, oh, so this is the bit on the top right. I predict yeah. what you'll come up. Foss off what it does. <laughs> yes, so that's good. So, so yeah, tell us what you've got, and then uh, we'll go through them all, and then Lara can tell us whether what's sure. actually going to come up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, go on, then. What have you got? On what you think might come up at PMQs, Adam? Uh, so I've got the WhatsApp messages, yeah. strikes, um, something about the RAF bases, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Sue Gray, migration, the human rights, um, tax, small boats, and migration. Bill. So you've got to come up with nine, and then what you like, yeah. you tick them off. Three Very good. Three, yeah. Very good. Um, and, uh, um, William, what have you got on yours? Well, I also got Sue Gray. Yeah. Uh, I got immigration. I yeah. also had migration, but that's quite <laughs> cheating. So yeah. I changed it to French because, you know, like the migration, like the boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah the boats coming across the channel, yeah. Uh, I got the inquiry, tax, uh, Matt Hancock, uh, strikes, uh, the European Court of Human Rights, and a violation, just like an overall summary thing. Yeah, yeah, just a, just a, just just everything. Just, a general just everything. Board, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Kevin, what have you got? Yours. So I put the inquiry, uh, just because it's often used as an excuse. Yeah. Uh, the WhatsApp messages, Sue Gray. I got Macron because of the summit on Friday. Yeah. Uh, the illegal migration bill from yesterday. The ECHR, small boats, deportation, and human rights. And so, is this just for the Keir Starmer Rishi Sunak uh, exchanges, or is it for the whole of? Uh, yes, because we are period four starts at twenty past twelve, so we just about managed to get uh, all those six questions in, and then we move on. And then you have to move on. So. So no La best for the rest. So, Lara, so no best for that's why you're here, Lara, <laughs> to do the best of the West Lakes one. Lara, what are you putting? Put, let's. Oh, I'm going to fill mine in now. Um, what are you putting on your? Have you got one? I have. You've got, got one. one. So what I have you got, got on yours, Lara? Uh, colour I... printed as well. I noticed. I know. <laughs> I no got expense spared here. Times radio. So what are you putting on yours? So I had similar. Um, I also had Sue Gray migration. Uh, I think we saw WhatsApps come up last week, but they could come up again. Strikes could come up, and then I mean, it, what was interesting about last week, you remember, Matt, was that uh, a number of different things came up. There was energy, there was cost of living, there was childcare, there was house building. So whether or not Alfie is in pet. Yeah, your favourite line. Can I just check? Did any of you know what Alfie is in pet was last week? No, no. no. <laughs> Mr. Beale explained it to us on the way here. Oh right, very yeah. good. <laughs> Well done, Mr. Beale. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to put Jeremy Corbyn on mine, just for old time's sake. OK, nice. See if he gets a mention. Um, what else am I going to put Have on? Have you got the bell ready? I have got the bell. <laughs> there we are, the bell is there. Uh, interesting whether or not Rich, uh, Keir Starmer does go on the migration question, because Labour don't 
necessarily have the answer to the question of well, what would you do instead? I think that's the important thing is that Labour, on the one hand, feel very confident in saying what's wrong with this bill. And I think many people largely think that Cooper, the Shadow Home Secretary, had quite a good showing in setting that out yesterday, particularly over uh, what seems like some tiny divisions within the party on the ECHR. But on the other hand, I think if pressed by Rishi Sunak on something that he has been very confidently well versed in speaking about for the last days and indeed weeks, I think it's difficult to see how he gets put into a particularly tight spot by Keir Starmer on migration today. But unlikely given that it is such a massive story for it to not come up at all, I think. How long have you been uh, doing this, uh, this using the bingo card? Uh, the bingo card was about three weeks ago now. We've done, we used to do just, I would say, right, quick, nine by nine. Yeah, yeah. We've got, it's 11.55, quick, let's do yeah. nine by nine and then come up with things. But then I realised that actually there's so much, you, meant, you asked about synoptic links, it's that idea that to be a really excellent politics student, you need that fluency to be able to link topics like democracy, the Prime Minister and Cabinet, the Supreme Court, things that will come up in an exam question, but actually to link them together to show that you understand how everything fits in relation to everything else in politics. And so, um, to explain that, so we've got the, the bingo cards top right. Explain the PMQ's synoptic links. What are the what are the things on the outside that we're sort of looking out for? So these are the key points in uh, the specification for A-level government and politics. So Parliament, the Constitution, democracy, partisan pressure groups, elections, devolution in the EU, Supreme Court, uh, Prime Minister and Cabinet. And Parliament. So, for example, when Keir Starmer's asking a question about, it might come on to ask a question about the small boats, it's very likely that there's also the concept of Rishi Sunak's party trying to split it up by asking a question that will then mean that it's really making him look to his backbenches. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the idea around the EU, so We've, we're still not with the uh, Windsor framework, I want to yeah, say. Yeah. Framework, framework, framework yeah, 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 just uh, protocols and frameworks. Yeah. It's all getting uh, confused these days. Um, but going back to that, that there are questions that will be about seemingly one thing, but actually have certain undercurrents that fit into other, other topics. And what about jokes? Who do you think is better at the jokes? Uh, Annabelle? Maybe Keir Starmer. You think Keir Starmer's yeah. good at the... I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a low bar to pay. When I get them, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. It's about Alfie about. What about you, Keir? Well... I don't really laugh at any of them, but probably just <laughs> yeah. It's not the point. They still yeah. make laughing noises, whether, yeah. they're, uh, uh, whether they're funny or not. Uh, what about you, William? Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, I think what's more funny is just the way at the end. So. <laughs> yeah, the noises. Yeah. The noises they make. Do you feel like you learn a huge amount while you're watching PMQs about what's going on in politics? Um, well, for me, I think that it is more cosmetic rather than an actual debate on policy. So... I probably wouldn't rely on PMQs for like receiving news, but just to look at the party lines on certain issues, I think it's quite useful, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Willie? Yeah, I agree. That makes that's yeah. pretty much the same yeah. thing, yeah. Um, I've just realised, if you're here, what's happening with all the other students? <laughs> oh, God. That's a very good point. <laughs> Um, they are listening in. They're that, listening that, in. That's what their cover work was set, was to Have they tune got a in. bingo card of things yep. that you normally say that they'll be ticking off? Well, it would be OK, would be one of the... Well, okay. It would be in the middle, OK. I yeah. start every sentence with OK. okay. William starts everything with so. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's start fine. Working, OK. And I say OK. I've well. just done it as well now. Uh, Adam, I don't care, what do you normally say? Uh, what will they be looking out for? Maybe, maybe um... um <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, um, a whole, there's a whole bingo card there. Yeah. Um, uh, Lara, we should also look it out for our, our new show friend, Stephen Flynn, who came in yet last week and said that he... Because he was caught on camera last week. We didn't spot it at the time. When Keir Starmer did the um, uh, Alfredus and Pet joke, he turned to one of his colleagues and was caught on camera mouthing, the, what the was that? Because <laughs> even he was slightly baffled by it. He also uh, told me he puts his hands in his pockets at PMQs because it winds up the toys. Really? Yeah. And they've told him that it won't. Yeah, he did it once. They shout across him at him, take your hands out your pockets. So that's Amazing. the only reason he does it there. I think he'll... I mean, he is, he's a permanent fixture of the best of the rest at the moment, isn't he? He's I had some so. quite good questions, so I'd yeah, be surprised yeah. if we don't see a bit of him later. Well, you need to go and gather your, your thoughts. And your, will you be in on time uh, this week? I will, thank you yeah, for being such right, a fantastic yeah. ally this International <laughs> Ladies' Day, man. <laughs> I think it's called actually International Women's Day. Uh, you call it International Well, Mr Beale will be very cross if you're late for the lesson at 12.30. <laughs> Lara will be back with the best of the rest in just a sec. Tim Shipman will be here. Uh, <laughs> Tim Shipman will be here as well. Would you, Mr Beale, would you allow someone to stand up and put their hands in their pockets if they were addressing the class? That's a C3 offence, which is the <laughs> worst thing that could possibly C3 happen. Offense. C3 What happens happen. if you get if you get a C3? A detention after school is for it? an hour. Well, six silence. formers have CSSs. What's up? What on earth is yeah. that? <laughs> it's, it's the sixth form equivalent of a C3. You're forced to study. You're yeah. forced to study. I know. Is that yeah. not what you're supposed to be doing all the time anyway? Well, <laughs> not if you're too good. Okay, yeah. very good. Very good. Right, here we go then. Get on the uh, Time Video YouTube channel. 
uh, is the most people we've ever had unpacking PMQs unpacked. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, we're live on Times Radio. Uh, Tim Shipman is here. The students from Vinus School are here. Uh, stay tuned. PMQs Unpacked is next here on Times Radio. Across the UK, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker. This is Times Radio. It's 12 o'clock. I'm Matt Chorley and this is Times Radio. PMQ's Unpacked is next, but first a quick look at the headlines this lunchtime. The government is defending its illegal migration bill against criticisms from the UN Refugee Council, uh, saying it's concerned that people with genuine asylum claims will be rejected. Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick says there are compelling legal arguments for the bill. He also said that Gary Lineker is out of step with the British public as the sports presenter compared language used by the government around the migration bill to language used by the Nazis in the 1930s. Northern Ireland police are increasing their reward to £150,000 for anyone with, with information about the shooting of off-duty policeman DCI John Caldwell in Omer. And the weather's meant flight delays across the country with Bristol Airport closing for part of this morning for snow-clearing operations. Temperatures in the Highlands dropped to this year's low of minus 15.4 degrees Celsius overnight. We'll have a full news and sports roundup at half past, but now live on Times Radio and the Times Radio YouTube channel, it's time for this. PMQ's Unpacked on Times Radio. Unpacking the politics and cutting through the crossfire. Order, order. I call Matt Chorley and Tim Shipman. Welcome along to PMQ's Unpacked. Tim Shipman's here, Ty Sunday Times Chief Political Commentator. Tim, how are you? I'm very well, Matty. We've got an easy half hour ahead. We don't need to do any analysis at all. Because Excellent. Also uh, joining us uh, from Viner School in West London, uh, we've got Mr Beale, the politics teacher. Hello, Mr Beale. Hello there, Matt. And we've got uh, Kira Davis. Hello, Kira. Hello. Uh, Annabelle Glenister. Hello. And William Parker. Hello. And we've got our bingo cards, uh, which you fill in every week during the politics lessons, uh, predicting what might come up on PMQs. Uh, Tim, what have you got on your bingo card? I've gone for a smorgasbord because it's a bit... Un I've got you think immigration the word smorgasbord might come no, up? No, that's okay. not on there. No, okay. I've got immigration, Hancock, budget, Ukraine, NHS, COVID, ECHR, Brexit, doctors. Blimey, that is quite a lot. Uh, I've got... So what have I written down? Migration... Of my bit migration and immigration. That's not going to work, is it? Jeremy Corbyn, WhatsApps, strikes, Gary Lineker, Matt Hancock, COVID, and I've written down strikes again. I need to come up with some better ones. Uh, Mr. Beale, what have you got on yours? I've got inquiry, uh, immigration. Well, just bill. any mention of an inquiry. Any mention of an inquiry. Oh, I see, I that's quite smart. Well, it's gone broad. Like yeah. That. But I put it in the top left hand corner. I'm so going to nick that. It's not necessarily going to get a house. Uh, small boats, tax. Sue Gray is in the centre for me. I feel it's. Sue Gray. I'm, yeah. I'm nicking Sue Gray as well. Um, con. Yvette Cooper last night talking about the immigration bill really made the idea about it being a con, so I think maybe Keir Starmer might lead that in. It might be part of the messaging. Uh, Macron might be mentioned yeah. with his visit coming up. Um, ECHR and strikes. And Tim, do you understand the synoptic links that we're supposed to find in the PMQs? I'm sorry. <laughs> Because the bit about <laughs> studying earlier and it not just being work, I think I must have spent yeah, uh, so, so too much time drinking. In the middle of our bingo cards, I've, tweet, I've tweeted it so you can, you can play along at home. PMQ Synoptic Link says, Constitution, democracy, parties and pressure groups, elections, devolution in EU, Supreme Court, PM and cabinet, cabinet and Parliament. And so we need to sit, look for those, apparently. So right, Mr. Beale's going to talk us through it. Yeah, just as they come up, you know, when, when something's being said and there's obviously a link between these key topics in uh, A-level politics, that's when we make those links. And you're going to score, we're all scoring them out of five at the, at the end, so we'll do that, we'll round yeah. that at the end as well. Uh, right, if, we are, if you are watching along uh, on the YouTube channel, let us know where you're watching. Oh, blimey, there's loads of you watching. Hi from White and Snowy Taunton, Richard from Fleet. Yep, this man who stopped me to, for a selfie once, but luckily I was sober. Uh, Mary says hello from cold and sunny Bothwell. Greetings from Ipswich, says Ian. Um, uh, hello from snowy Leicestershire, says Stephen. Half of them are families. Are your family? Uh, well, that's good. We'll take it. them. We don't, we don't mind who they are as long as they're, they're listening uh, and watching along. Um, so, uh, somebody says, should Matt Chorley be wearing a tie? They've done a poll. 60% say no, so that's fine. Mm. Uh, are you happy with that, Mr Beale? As a tie wearer myself at this point, then I say... Mm, I can't, mm. Hello from Indiana, says Marie. Uh, Martin says, come on, I've woken up for this. You, well, if it's anything like last week's Martin, you'll be soon <laughs> oh, back to sleep. 
Who knows where no, we'll go. Do I'll... stick around. <laughs> yeah, do stick around. It'll be definitely worth it for uh, the students' analysis, if not for mine and Tim's. Right, here we go then. PMQ's Unpack Live pencils and bingo cards at the ready. Let's go live to the House of Commons. This is Keir Starman, question number one. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. And today, on International Women's Day, we celebrate the successes of women in our society. Yeah. It's a crying shame that as we do so, we face legislation which drives a coach and horses through our world-leading modern slavery framework, which protects women from exploitation. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, in the last decade, this government has introduced five plans to tackle illegal immigration, five utter failures. The problem just gets worse with every new gimmick. The Home Secretary says the public are sick of tough talk and inadequate action. Does he agree with her assessment of this government's record? Well, Mr. 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 Speaker, what the Honourable Gentleman fails to recognise is that there is a global migration problem. We are not alone in facing these challenges, and it is precisely because it is precisely because that across Europe the numbers escalating to the extent they are, we have brought forward new plans because we are determined, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that this remains a compassionate and generous country. That that is done fairly and legally. That's why we will break the criminal gangs, Mr Speaker. We've announced new agreements with Albania and France, tougher, tougher immigration enforcement, and now new legislation that makes it clear that if you come here illegally, you will be detained and swiftly removed. Yeah. But, Mr Speaker, what we haven't heard is the Honourable Gentleman's plan. We know what it is. It's open-door immigration. Yeah and unlimited asylum. Whilst he may be on the side of the people smugglers, we're on the side of the British people. Oh, wow, there's quite a lot to uh, um, unpick in all of that. Um, first of all, Keir Starmer's question. Uh, making the point that, essentially, with Tim, we've got Conservative uh, ministers, Swell of Arfman, essentially attacking the last 13 years of Conservative government. Uh, yes, um, and bizarrely, last night, the government put out this... Um, thing talking about how people would not get access to our modern slavery system which is most peculiar um given that most people don't think modern slavery is a it sounded system. like you if you'd come joining. here you could only join here our modern slavery yes. system become a slave if you'd come here legally seemed to be the uh, the implication of the graph that they put out there was then a slightly strange question that sort of said do you do you agree with me that you're rubbish um which didn't quite get us anywhere i don't think but yeah. um uh you know, and then a very tough response from Sunak, him, who knows that the polls are on his side on this um, and that a lot of the key seats he needs to win uh, are supportive of what he's doing. Yeah. Um, and I would have thought 70% of the House of Commons and the city in which it's located find it horrifying. And uh, that's the politics of the situation. And that's the politics of the situation. Uh, what do we think of it, Gang? Um, so I just did a synoptic link to democracy and elections, just about the reference to public support for migration reform That's and very good, public you're, support... You're much better than I am on the, on the synoptic links. Sort of the public support for cracking down on criminal gangs. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, the Conservatives want to be seen to be doing that in order to have democratic support at the next election. William, what did you write down? Yeah, I also linked to PM and Cabinet with, like, obviously yeah. the idea of the Home Secretary, like, trying to do this bill, and also the Constitution, how it's, like... It's like debatably illegal for the action of from the Home Secretary. That yeah. was the whole thing about the like the European Court of Human Rights. Did anybody tick off anything apart from migration on their bingo card? That's the big question. <laughs> well, I put French, so he's talking <laughs> about France. So I got. Two uh, you, I think you can take that. You can definitely yeah. take that. Um, the, the line about uh, Labour being in favour of open door immigration mm. on the side of the people smugglers. That's quite. Uh, Bold. Bold. It's punchy. It's quite punchy. Uh, well, let's find out what Keir Starmer makes of that. Let's go back to the House of Commons. This is question number two. Mr Speaker, if he was serious about stopping the boats, he'd actually steal our plan on stopping the boats, smash the gangs, sort out the returns, and clean up the utter mess. Mr Speaker. I'm going to hear this. Oh, it's Lindsay Hoyle. Nobody's going to... I wouldn't if I were you. But... I think we've heard enough. I want to hear the questions and the answers, and it won't be interrupted. Yes, Mr Speaker, nobody on this side of the House wants open borders. On that side, they've lost control of the borders. Now, these, 
promised the country, he's promised the country that this bill will stop all small boat crossings. No ifs, no buts. Sounds like more talk. So, in the interest of adequate action, when will he achieve that? Yeah. Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, we, 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 Mr. Speaker, we, we'll be implementing this plan as soon as we can pass it through Parliament. So, I look forward to the honourable gentleman's support. But the, the reality is, Mr. Speaker, on this issue, it, the, the honourable gentleman has been on the wrong side of this. Prime Minister, Mr. Stafford, if you don't want to hear him. You can go and have a good cup of tea, nice and strong, I suspect. But I will hear him, Prime Minister. M M Mr Speaker, the Honourable Gentleman has been on the wrong side of this issue his entire career. He, descri he described all immigration law as racist. He said it was a mistake to control immigration. And he has never, ever voted for tougher asylum laws. It is clear, Mr Speaker, while he's in hock to the open border activists, we're on the side of the British people. Wowzers. Uh, somebody's been doing their research. Um, interesting, Keir Starmer making clear nobody on this side of the House is in favour of open borders. Uh, it's your plan that's not working. Um, but, yeah, clearly because Number 10 have uh, decided that they're, they're going to come out studs up on this, Tim. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing on this is that there's two approaches, aren't there? Um, to politics, one of which is that you don't get onto your opponent's patch and elevate what they're interested in, and it's a little bit brave for Starmer to go mm. on immigration. Um, the other approach can be, and sports managers like Alex Ferguson and Bill Belichick used to do this, they used to take out the strongest card of the opponent and say, if we can neutralise you on that, and this is what Boris Johnson tried to do on health at the last election, yeah, yeah. neutralise Labour's biggest card and then romp home on our own issues. And in a sense, Starmer is trying to say, look, we've got a plan, we're better than you, we'll implement it. Um, I don't think most people know what Labour's uh, plan is to deal with the small boats, and I think most voters understand that this is not an issue that Labour is instinctively terribly yeah, comfortable yeah. with. Um, and, you know, if, if, if Starmer is, uh, has not ever voted for controls, that's, that is some kind of uh, interesting it, research, and that, it's an interesting card to play. Is that not possibly because Labour have always been in opposition while he's being an MP, so he's never actually voted in favour of anything? Uh, well, that may be the case. But I mean, that's a slightly different uh, thing. Right, we've got, still got our, our A-level political students uh, here. Annabelle, what did you make of that exchange? Uh, well, I've written down, like, the repetition he's been using lately in PMQs, that he's, like, there for the British people, yeah. emphasis on British people and not people from these struggling communities yeah. that are coming over here. Um, also, like, earlier there was a juxtaposition between, like, swiftly removing and that compassionate side of conservatives um so i'm getting mixed messages but i think what they're trying to do is humanize themselves yeah um which is fair enough but i don't know if it's really working with me did anybody tick off anything else on their bingo card small boats now got a mention so that's, small that's, boats, that's, that's, that's tick that one off um uh mr Bill, what have you made of it so far well, I think what's really interesting and has been the case for a couple of weeks now is that uh, this kind of idea of who represents the British people is being contested yeah. over and that the Rishi Sunak side and the Prime Minister's side are really trying to pigeonhole and pin certain statements. As you can see there, this is the first time actually we've heard really like previous statements that Keir Starmer has made of which he's got a lot, uh, which the, and a bit like Tim was pointing out about trying to maybe skewer him with previous comments. But I think it's probably more indicative of the idea that they consider him a really viable candidate to be Prime Minister and are now trying to undermine his, him in as many ways yeah. as possible. Um, but I, again, a bit like Annabelle said, I'm not, I, it's tricky to see whether it's actually working outside the Westminster bubble, these kinds of things. But is that, I suppose that ultimate division they're looking for is who is on the side of the British people? And the, the language we just heard from Rishi Sunak on, you're on the side of the people smugglers. We've heard before, you're on the mm. side of the strikers. You're on the you know, try to paint Keir Starmer's always been on the wrong but side. But on the strikes... He's not. He's on pretty thin ice yeah, because yeah, yeah. the numbers actually show that the public is pretty supportive of point. the strikers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even of, on this, you'd be hard pushed to find a poll that suggests less than seventy percent yeah. of the population wants tough immigration controls. Yeah, yeah. And this is just the issue that Westminster finds it hardest to deal with. It cannot comprehend that most yeah, of the yeah, country yeah. does not like but this. But ultimately, the political whisper this is: it, uh, Rishi Sunak is is by going so hard on it, increasing public awareness of the problem. He's betting the House on his ability to do anything about it, which is where there's real doubts. Yeah, and suggesting you'll stop all the boats is, is yeah, clearly yeah. nonsensical. I mean, that's a sort of Johnsonian statement yeah, rather yeah. than a usual Sunakian <laughs> one. <laughs> right, let's go back to the House of Commons. So this is question number three. Mr Speaker, 
When I was in charge of prosecutions, I extradited countless rapists, and, and the, convi the conviction rate for people smuggling was twice what it is today. I voted against his legislation last time because I said it wouldn't work. Since it became law, the numbers have gone up. He's proved me right. He should be apologising, not gloating. The Prime Minister says they will detain people who aren't eligible to claim asylum here and then return them. Well, they already tried that under the last legislation. Last year, 18,000 people were deemed ineligible to apply for asylum. That's the easy bit, the talk. But as for the action, Prime Minister, how many of them have actually been returned? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, as a as a, result, as a result of the plans we brought forward, we have almost doubled the number of people returned this year. But he talked about he talked about laws. He talked about. Uh, is that Lindsay Hoyle again? I think the front bench needs to be a little quieter because I want to hear. He's now telling off the Labour side. Did. I'm going to. Our constituents want to hear the importance of Prime Minister's questions, both the questions and the answers. Show our constituents the respect they do. Come on, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, he asked, he, asked, he asked about arrests, he asked about our laws. Actually, when I was in Dover yesterday talking to our law enforcement officials, what did they tell me? Precisely because of the law that the Conservative Government passed last year, they have now been able to arrest more than double the number of people they did before. 397 in the last six months. But stopping the boats, Mr. Speaker, stopping the boats is not just my priority, it is the people's priority. But his, posi his position on this is clear. He wanted to, in his words, scrap the Rwanda deal. He voted against measures to deport foreign criminals, Mr. Speaker, and he even argued against deportation flights. Well, and we know why, because on this matter, he talked about his legal background. He's just another lefty lawyer standing in our way. <laughs> God, I need a ring of a bell of that. We've not had that. Have you ever had that from she seen that before? No, it's I mean, Johnsonian again. I mean, it's like he's had an injection of uh, sort of Boris monkey glands, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the Rwanda deal was passed by the by the High Court, and it's still regarded as an atrocity by lots of people. Um, and um, you know, the, the research department has done its work, and um, frankly, um, I think Sunak's winning this at the moment. Yeah. And and the the noise behind him is um, is is pretty good news for the Prime Minister. Um, uh, William, what have you got? What did you make of that one this time, Matt? Um, yeah. William, one of our A-level students, is in uh, analysing PMQs. Unpacked for us. What did you make of it? I agree. I think Rishi Sunak definitely seems more confident in what he's like saying, uh, especially with like the synoptic links. You've got the Rwanda deal about like overturning that. That goes in like, the Supreme Court. But um, I think, yeah, I don't. I think Sakir Stam is trying to like give like build like hammer into um, Rishi Sunak, but it's just not working because I think Rishi Sunak's definitely got more like. Receipts against uh, Sir Keir Starmer in the sense that he's like he's bring got back his like career in like a, as a lefty lawyer. Yeah. So he's definitely more like. I, I wonder, Keir, if it's a bit of uh, Keir Starmer partly because he's so far ahead of the polls, he feels like he can go on an issue like this, which clearly isn't his strong suit. It feel it feels a bit like he's he's playing at this in a way that Rishi Sunak actually feels more authentic, maybe. Yeah, and I think. Just something I pick up on with the synoptic links also to do with the divisions between the party politics. I guess that's what you're yeah. trying to point out. Uh, so I would argue with like just to link the political parties to the parliament topic yeah. that this is showing a two party system in parliament. And yeah. I also think the um, all the cheering and Lindsay Hoyle having to get the house to <laughs> calm down a little bit is sort of highlighting how divisive our two-party system yeah, really yeah. is it's it's very adversarial it's always like you're on the wrong side we're on the right side uh, and there's no consensus so that would be potentially a line of argument for an essay yeah there's not even a lot of uh, consensus probably within the past mm. i suspect the point that, as well tim is that rishi sunak's getting his mps to cheer i suspect there might be some labor mps behind Keir Starmer who aren't a bit squeamish about all of this. Yeah, and just wondering why he's done it. I mean, what I would expect Starmer to do on a tricky subject like this is to start putting down some markers, asking some questions which he can come back to in two yeah. or three months or six months, 
when you know this plan has either uh, worked or not worked or is still in the process of being pushed through and the numbers are still coming in you know that's that's where he can score some points on this and i would have expected him rather than just sort of banging his head against the wall to sort of put down a few um, things that Specifics. it gets Sunak to commit yeah, yeah, yeah. to some to some things. Which is that, asking that six times, un- when, will, when will you stop the boats? That would, Repeatedly would be a that, sort that would, of sharper way of well, doing it. and it would have been, yeah, yeah. pretty good TV. Well, I mean, let, let's see if you go back. Uh, he, this is, what, question number four now from Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, all that nonsense because he doesn't want to answer the question because he knows what the answer is. The number is 21. I thought it was a man of detail. 21. 21 people out of the 18,000. And what happens to the rest? They sit in hotels and digs for months on end at the taxpayers' expense. Last year, he promised to end the hotel farce. That's the talk. But because of his mess, there are thousands of people who can't claim asylum and can't be returned. So where does he actually think they're going to end up? Yeah. Mr Speaker, he talks about the pressure on our asylum system. Right? So, so it, 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 we, we've actually got a clear plan to stop people coming here in the first place. Mr Speaker, le- he, Labour, Labour have absolutely no plan on this issue because they simply don't want to tackle the problem. We introduced, we introduced tougher sentences for people smugglers. They opposed it. We signed a deal with Rwanda. They opposed it. We are deporting foreign offenders as we speak. They oppose it. I'm going to say to the member from Hull, save that good voice for the rugby match. You might be able to join Mr Stafford over that strong cup of tea, Prime Minister. (laughs) Speaker, in fact, he opposed every single step of what we've done to try and stop this problem. In fact, his his only contribution to this debate well, we know what it is. In his own words, what did he say? We will defend free movement. That's the Labour Party for you, Mr Speaker. I imagine Rishi Sinha would be quite annoyed with the Speaker for interrupting what was turning into his clip for it social was, media. It was beginning to look quite sort of fluent, wasn't it? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, it is what it is. I mean, Starmer had a, um, you know, uh, a good comeback on the numbers. Um and he can push him harder on how much all this um, housing of people is going to cost. But, um, you know, uh, these guys at some point are not going to be in the hotels. They're going to be in very attractive ex-holiday camps and military facilities and all the rest of it. I'm not um, sure how attractive some of the military facilities are. Uh, no. Um, uh, here's an emerging thing. I don't know if you, you've picked up on this, uh, A-level students with us. Uh, Rishi's, uh, Keir Starmer keeps using the word mess and Rishi Sunak keeps applying with the no plan. That's the sort of the, the thing that comes up again and again at, at, um, uh, at PMQs. Over, oh, I don't know how many weeks now we've been uh, sort of going through um, going through all of that. Mr Bill, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's really interesting that you say that because it's, it, it's like that idea, again, of posturing towards 2025, 2020, where the next election's going to be, and you can already see that idea of trying to build some messages up. I thought as well, actually, what's really interesting, and this is a hangover from Johnson, is this idea of, as a parliament topic, the role of the opposition, the incredulity that the opposition is opposing what they're doing is a really interesting argument that I've never understood but seems to keep being rolled out about why are you not supporting us? Why won't you vote for us? And also, crucially, maths in the House of Commons means Rishi Sunak can get this through. It's not like the Theresa May days, so they have got a majority. Uh, Just because I'm slightly conscious of time, let's go back uh, to the House of Commons. I think this is question number five from Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, he stood there last year saying exactly the same thing. We said it wouldn't work. They passed the law. The numbers went up. (laughs) Absolutely deluded. Um, He can't say where they'll return people because they spent £140 on Rwanda and it doesn't work. They can't say how they'll return people because this bill doesn't come with a single new return agreement. And they can't say when they'll fix the mess because it's more talk, more gimmicks, more promises to be broken. Now, a few months ago, I put to him that of the people who arrived on small boats, only 4% had been processed. He stood there and said, that's unacceptable. What's the number now? Ah. Mr Mr. Speaker, Mr Speaker, 
as a, as a result as a result of what we've done, there are now 6,000 fewer people in the caseload of asylum backlog. We're hiring more caseworkers. We're increasing their productivity. And again, he's mistaken when it comes to returns, Mr. Speaker, because we do have returns agreements with India, with Pakistan, with Serbia, with Nigeria, and crucially, now with Albania, where we are returning hundreds of people, Mr. Speaker. But look, our position on this is clear. If you arrive here illegally, you will not be able to claim asylum here. You will not be able to access the modern slavery system, and you will not be able to make spurious human rights claims. That is the right thing to do. But he's simply he's going on and on about process, hiding behind process, because he doesn't want to confront the substance. We are the party of fairness, and he represents the party of free movement. I'm not sure that works totally well. Um, uh, uh, William, what did you make of it? Uh, again, uh, it's going into like the preparing for like elections. You've got the rhetoric of like the deluded, like very like uh, like like motifs of like you're not ready. You're not prepared. So I think it's quite interesting in that sense. But I think, but again, I think like the media moment. Keir Starmer's trying to have his media moment. Like, yeah. Going on about like you can't do this. You're a failure. Da -da 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 -da. So I think it's quite interesting. Try, try to land. It's all about that's all about the yeah. message of social media. I'm not sure. Did we learn very much there, Tim? Well, I think the interesting thing is that Starmer is kind of almost making a case for why there's a problem. Yeah. And saying nothing works and it's all terribly difficult. Um, and Sunak's the one actually sort of sitting there trying to say this might be a solution. And Starmer says Rwanda doesn't work. Well, it hasn't been tried yet. It's yeah. still going through the courts. So I mean, you know, we don't know whether that's the case or not. It's got to go to the court of appeal. Um, and I think, um, as my colleague Harry York reported in the paper at the weekend, if they if they can win the court of appeal and it stops there, then they might start having Rwanda flights by December. Um, if it goes to the Supreme Court, we're probably looking at next March before we get them. So. You know, they're desperately trying to put all this stuff in place and um, none of it's yet working. Um, I guess we're about to hear how many of the uh, uh, caseload has been processed. I think Keir Starmer's about to answer his own question. I think he probably is. I think is. probably is. Right, let's do the last question then and then we'll do your, your scores on the doors. Uh, right, this is question number six from Keir Starmer. I thought he was supposed to be the man of detail. He's gone to all that lens to avoid the detail. He knows the answer to the question. Less than 1% of those arrived by boats have been processed. He shakes his head. It's the government's own statistic. On his watch, on his watch, processing of those boat cases has gone from unacceptable, in his words, to almost non-existent. And doesn't that tell you everything you need to know? After 13 years, small boat crossings higher than ever, claims unprocessed, the taxpayer paying for hotel rooms, criminal gangs running all the way laughing to the bank, and an asylum sister utterly broken on his watch. This is their fifth Prime Minister, their sixth immigration plan, their seventh Home Secretary, and after all this time, all they offer is the same old gimmicks and empty promises. Now, I don't agree with the Home Secretary on very much, but when she says that the Tories are all talk and no action, exactly. she's spot on, isn't she? Yeah. Uh, Mr Speaker... Prime Minister. M M Mr Speaker, illegal immigration Im enforcement, up. The amount of people processing claims, up. The backlog is down. The number of returns agreements is up. New, new re hundreds of people returned to Albania and now new laws to detain and deter illegal migrants. It's clear what we stand for, Mr Pisco. We're doing what's right. We are acting with compassion. We are acting with fairness. And we are acting to respect the laws and borders of our country. We are delivering what we said. And it's crystal clear, listening to this, Mr Speaker, that it's going to be the Conservatives and only the Conservatives that stop the boats. It's going to be the Conservatives who stop the boats. There's no getting around that, Tim. Uh, no, it's uh, it's pretty um, robust rod for one's back. Um, and as I say, I think, you know, even people in the government who take a tough line on this think that it's going to be next spring before they start to show any progress on it. Um, and they're hoping they can show just enough before the general election to make this a key dividing line. It's pretty clear it's a key dividing line. Starmer did well there in saying the system's a shamble and nothing you've done so far has worked. Um, but I think, um, you know, inherent in uh, Sunak's replies, and everybody in the chamber knows it, you know, Labour is inherently far less interested in actually... Uh, dealing with this than, than the Tories are now positioning themselves to do. Um, but if Labour is so far ahead in the polls, it's the sort of thing they're going to have to address. Uh, they, yes. can't, they can't think that's not one for us. Uh, no. 
And it's the kind of thing that has huge traction with, um, you know, voters in those red wall seats, which the Tories grabbed last time and Labour will be looking to grab back. And it's a dilemma for both parties that if they want to win nationally, uh, they need to sound uh, nice and cuddly to a degree. And if they want to impress um, a certain group of voters, uh, they need to um, uh, swirl things around their heads uh, aggressively on, on this. Yeah. Right, OK, let's do scores on the doors then with our Viner's School bingo card. How, uh, how, who's got the most things ticked off of the bingo cards, do you think? Oh, I did terribly. I only got two. I got four. You got four? Yeah. Four. Oh, four. Go on then, Kira. What, what did you get, Kira? Oh, I got small boats, illegal migration, deportation and human rights. Very good. I Anyone? lied. I got five. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, so I got something about the RAF bases, migration, yeah. um, small boats and then tax, and then a little bit about human rights. OK, let's go around the... Around I the, got one. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, I got one. I wrote down... My, yeah, <laughs> Gary Lineker, no mention at all. Unbelievable. How sad. Uh, right, uh, let's do scores on the doors then. Uh, marks out of five uh, for Keir Starmer. Let's we'll go away, I around. got three. Yeah. Three as well. I get two and a half. Ooh. Two. Mr Bill with Tim Shipman. Uh, I'll give him three because it was a tough topic, and I'll give him two points for that, and I'll give him a point for landing that it's all a mess. It's all a mess. I mean, no, he, I he, he, he gets won. some credit for, for tackling something that yes. a previous Labour leader might not have bothered with. OK, then, what about Rishi Sunak's uh, performance? Kira? I got three and a half stars. Oh, Annabelle? I got four. I William? also gave him four. Mr Beale? Five stars. I think it's his best performance yet at PMQs. Really? Tim? I'm loath to give five, but I agree I that it's exactly his best so. performance, <laughs> certainly in months. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's four or five, isn't it? I'll give him five, then, because, actually... I don't think he could have done much better on that than yeah. he actually did. And he's really striking. I think he's got much better in the House of Commons. I thought it was striking last week. He was much better on the Brexit deal in the Commons than he was at the press conference. And he actually believes this stuff. Yeah, this is the yeah, interesting yeah. thing. You know, his family were migrants. They came to this country. They did it legally. And he, that stuff, when he talks about fairness, he really, really passionately believes that. Yeah. People sort of think, oh, you know, non-white man being tough on immigration, that's a bit discordant. Not to Sunak. He mm. thinks it's totally consistent and... And actually, this this is politically, tactically sensible for the Tories. He also believes it. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's um, uh, pretty Andy, clearly yeah, yeah. his biggest win at PMQs in a very, very long time. Well, thank you, Gam, for taking us through that. Uh, we've had loads of messages uh, in about you. Neil says on the YouTube channel, great to see the students in the studio with their teacher. Their contributions are insightful and clearly formulated and expressed. Very encouraging to see young people interested <laughs> and engaged. Superb. So thank well done. You. They're not normally... As, uh, I was not. waiting for the first person to suggest they replaced us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, someone else has said, can we have a bell every time someone says synoptic links? <laughs> there we are. I've done that. Uh, thank you to Mr Bill, to Annabelle, Kira and William. Thanks so much for coming in. And we're going to get you, you back to do the quiz. Is that yes. right? Just before one. You can go and have a break now. They'll look after you out in the studio. Lara Spirit will be here with the best of the rest in just a sec. She's been watching the rest of PMQ so that you don't have to. Uh, first, let's get a news roundup from Rachel Jewell. Across the UK, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker, this is Times Radio. Thanks, Matt. Good afternoon. The Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, has accused the government's asylum plan of driving a coach and horses through the country's modern slavery framework. Speaking at Prime Minister's questions, Sir Keir referenced International Women's Day and celebrating the successes of women in society, adding this. In the last decade, this government has introduced five plans to tackle illegal immigration, five utter failures. The problem just gets worse with every new gimmick. The Home Secretary says the public are sick of tough talk and inadequate action. Does he agree with her assessment of this government's record? Well, the plans announced yesterday would see migrants who arrive through unauthorised means deported and hit with a lifetime ban from returning. Rishi Sunak pointed out that there is a global migration problem. We are not alone in facing these challenges and it is precisely because, it is precisely because that across Europe the numbers escalating to the extent they are, we have brought forward new plans because we are determined. Mr Speaker, to ensure that this remains a compassionate and generous country, that that is done fairly and legally. Meanwhile, Gary Lineker says he'll continue to speak up for those with no voice after the BBC's revealed it was going to remind him of his social, social media responsibilities. A tweet from the Match of the Day host appeared to compare ministers' attitudes to asylum seekers with policies in Nazi Germany. 
The reward is now £150,000 for information leading to the arrest and conviction of anyone involved in the attempted murder of a detective in County Tyrone. It's two weeks since DCI John Caldwell was shot up to ten times in Oma. He's still in hospital. And Bristol Airport says it's now open, but travellers are still being urged to check with their airline after snow and ice grounded planes there this morning. So on to the weather. Rain and snow pushing into Wales and England may cause some travel disruptions through this afternoon. Brighter for much of Northern Ireland and Scotland with good amounts of sunshine. Scattered wintry showers skirting into the coasts of Northern Scotland. Kane Reeves has the sports. A former Chelsea midfielder says he never thought the current manager Graham Potter would have been sacked even if Chelsea lost last night. Victory ensures Potter's tenure continues for a while longer as Chelsea qualify for the Champions League quarterfinals. Chelsea overturned a one-goal deficit from the first leg, beating Borussia Dortmund 2-0 on the night to go through on aggregate. Andy Townsend told us the Chelsea boss was massively helped by the fans. That atmosphere when everyone left the bridge last night was it's jubilant, crazy. it was up, it was buoyant, it was like really, everyone was excited and mm. and, and delighted that they'd safely navigated a tough tie, but also what the way that they'd seen their team go about it. Tonight, Tottenham have their chance of turning things around against AC Milan, also in the Champions League. They face the Italians in North London and also welcome back their manager Antonio Conte, who's been missing from the sidelines since surgery earlier this year. Barcelona's former president, Josep Bartomeu, could be facing charges of business corruption following an investigation in Spain. It's alleged Bartomeu sent payments totaling almost 7 million euros to a senior Spanish referees company between 2001 and 2017. Martin Ziegler's piece on the Times website and app explains the story in full detail. The chair of UK Sports has warned of Russia and Belarus potentially championing Olympians should they be allowed to compete next summer. Dame Catherine Granger's comments come as the IOC decide whether athletes from those countries can compete as neutrals in Paris 2024. Dame Catherine says any decision will be controversial. If we see Russian Olympic champions, Russian Paralympic champions, Russian you know winners at any of the different events, can that be used politically as a sort of staging post from the country? Although sport would love to sit separately and, and feel it's non-political, it, it sort of feels like it's drawn into these political decisions all the time. And reports suggest Marcus Smith may just start for England this weekend against France in the Six Nations. It suggests that head coach Steve Borthwick could send out an attacking lineup which will feature the Harlequins fly half. The team's set to be confirmed tomorrow around lunchtime. You can read more in Will Kelleher and Alex Lowe's joint piece on the Times websites and app. This is Times Radio. Let your imagination run wild at Disney's The Lion King. Exploding with glorious colours, stunning effects and enchanting music. Watch in awe as the majesty of the Serengeti comes to life all around you, right in the heart of London's West End. Discover more at thelionking.co.uk. Things are getting twice as tasty with McDonald's Double Up. Double Up? McDonald's are giving away double rewards points. Double rewards points? With the new bonus point offer each week. New bonus point offer each week? For three weeks only. Three weeks only? McDonald's Double Up. Get double points on your favourites with my McDonald's rewards until the 19th of March. Download the McDonald's app now to sign up. Ends 19th March. Offer varies each week. Points only on menu items. Participating restaurants only. 18 plus. T's and C's apply. John Pinar at Drive. This afternoon from 5 on Times Radio. Weekday mornings on Times Radio with Net Wealth. For a clearer view of your financial world, go to netwealth.com. A very good afternoon. It's Matt Cholley on Times Radio. We've just done PMQs Unpacked with our friends, students from uh, Viner School in West London. Uh, they'll be back to do the quiz just before one. But now she's here. Lara Hello. Spirits, uh, Times Red Box reporter, has made it in. She's been watching the rest of PMQ so that you don't have to. Uh, bringing us uh, the best of the rest. Who are we starting with, first of all, Lara? So we're going to do the full Stephen Flynn exchange. A There's full a Stephen Flynn? Yeah, that, so it is actually very two questions from Stephen Flynn today. The first that we'll play now, uh, which he relates to International Women's Day, uh, is a question regarding whether or not a... Well, it's a migration question, whether or not a woman who comes to the country via a small boat uh, who has been trafficked uh, has any recourse to modern slavery rules under the new legislation. So I think it's worth listening so to this. the whole thing. OK, lovely stuff. <laughs> um, Mr Speaker, on International Women's Day... Can I ask the Prime Minister to reconfirm 
that under his proposed new asylum laws, a woman who is sex trafficked to the UK on a small boat by a criminal gang will not be afforded protection under our modern slavery laws. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it's precisely because we want to target our compassion and our resources on the world's most vulnerable people that we must get a grip of this system and break. Can I just say to the SNP, it's quite right the questions are asked, but I also want to hear the answer. Shouting from up there is not helping anybody. Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as I said, it's precisely because we want to target our resources and our compassion on the world's most vulnerable people that we need to get a grip of this system, make sure that we have control over our borders, make sure our, our system and resources are not overwhelmed so that we can help the people most in need. There is nothing fair, there is nothing compassionate about sustaining a system where, as we saw recently, people are dying on these crossings. That is not right, and our plans will stop that from happening. Mr MacDonald. I don't need to hear you chunnering all the way through. You can be <laughs> Lindsay Hall certainly on one today. Come on, Stephen Flynn. Let's go back. Question two, to Stephen Flynn. I take that as a yes from the Prime Minister that women who are the victims of sex trafficking will not be protected under our modern slavery laws. What a complete and utter disgrace, Mr. Speaker. But whilst it may shock, it shouldn't necessarily surprise, because this is the Tory government that, in recent months, has spoken of invasions. Just yesterday, this was a Tory government that said that 100 million people could be coming to these shows. And this is the Tory government that this morning said that number could, in fact, be billions. Complete and utter nonsense. So may I ask the Prime Minister, from whom are his government taking inspiration? Nigel Farage or Enoch Powell? And what a load of nonsense, Mr Speaker. What a load of nonsense. No, the, in fact, the, the figure of 100 million, it doesn't come from the government. It comes from the United Nations, Mr Speaker. And it illustrates the scale of the global migration crisis that the world is grappling with, which is why it is right that we take action, Mr Speaker. Because if we do not, the numbers will continue to grow. They have more than quadrupled in just two years. It's a sign of what is to come, and our system will continue to be overwhelmed. And if that happens, we will not be able to help the people who are most in need of our support, our generosity, and our compassion. This has always been the way of this country. And once we get a grip of this system, that's who we can extend our support to. And that's why it's the right legislation. That's interesting, that, uh, Lara. SNP coming at this from the far more from the left that we might have previously expected from the Labour Party. Yeah, exactly. That was absent entirely. You will have heard and obviously analysed the discussion between uh, Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak earlier and Stephen Flynn there, uh, you know, using the comparison to uh, Enoch Powell and Nigel Farage, which I thought was interesting in and of itself, given obviously, uh, you know, the reputation that that famous uh, Rivers of Blood speech has from uh, the former Conservative Secretary of State. But uh, I think more, you know, even more interesting, Rishi Sunak's response, which was uh, to not shy away at all from a full throated yeah, yeah. defence of this policy and response. And I think he's completely convinced that the public are on his side of this, regardless of the comparisons to that language that come from the opposite benches. Interesting, uh, Stephen Flynn, that, that line on Nigel Farage or Enoch Powell, uh, Tim, the, the 100 million number is one that Suella Bowman's put out saying, I think this is writing in the mail, uh, there are 100 million people displaced around the world and likely billions more eager to come here if possible. Well, look, the government's official estimate of how many people might want to move to Britain is officially quotes, limitless. Um, the estimate of how many are likely to come on small boats this year is 50% higher than last year because of what appears to be... But that's tens of thousands mass, still. That's t yes, I mean, I'm not, so no, I'm not, no. I'm not playing no, no, it down no, with that no, in no, terms of the numbers. No, no, yeah. but, but that's the difference between sort of um, uh, 50 and 80,000 people trying to get on boats because of what they see uh, as a big migration going on through Central Asia at the minute, coming out of Afghanistan and moving... Uh, still people coming out of Syria. Um, it's that kind of uh, part of the world. So these numbers, I think, are fairly internationally recognised that there's a lot of people on the move. Um, and I think I don't think Sunak's wrong to say that this is a sort of systemic issue that's going to be with us for several decades in all likelihood. Um, I'm just struck every time I look at those pictures and you have a... Uh, an, you know, and, uh, a Prime Minister of Asian Extraction sitting next to a Home Secretary of Asian Extraction, both of whom are hammering a hard line on immigration. And I think people who think this is as straightforward as 
it's nice to let people come here or it's not nice to not let them come here and I'm missing a trick really and Stephen Flynn you know is a very uh, adept politician in terms of his own base um but um it's uh you know in terms of the, the nation and the polling uh it's seen that that's on the winner here yeah and it's certainly although i suppose the, the politics of scotland might be slightly different they, you know they're each playing to their base indeed um let's go well, who else have you got then love who else did you pick out as worth uh worth a listen so the final one i had there are a couple of it was actually quite a good natured backbench uh pmq session today and you had a lot of questions uh regarding international women's day of course yeah. uh and you had one from rosie duffield uh which i think we'll listen to now uh which uh you know rosie rises to her feet to the cheers of those from the conservative benches and not uh to those from the labor benches explain or, to people who don't know because sometimes the sort of rosie duffield of thing is like a slightly ab you know complicated issue what, what what explain her her role in the labor party so rosie duffield uh who rosie duffield seen now to be uh in conflict with uh the party leadership's lines on uh you know the trans issue particularly uh there's kind of allegations that she's been uh she's been kind of you know bullied or the subject of uh, of kind of unpleasant abuse online and elsewhere and that the labor leadership haven't necessarily stood up for her uh in the way that she and others would have liked and so this question today uh was uh you know very interesting definitely very uh pointed to those uh, on her own benches she uh she asked whether in the run-up to May's local elections, uh, it was right for candidates to be quizzed by uh, residents and those that they knock on the doors of about their positions on on women's uh, issues, uh, pointing implicitly, I think, to uh, the ambiguity from you know Sir Keir Starmer that many have alleged he has, uh, and he is greeted. She is greeted with uh, a huge amount of uh, support from uh, Rishi Sunak in this question. So I think it's interesting to Co listen to. But politics are very complicated. Right, let's take a listen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As today is International Women's Day, does the Prime Minister agree with me that voters in the run-up to May's local elections have every right to ask candidates who are standing for a position of responsibility in local government questions relating to women's rights? And does he believe that as representatives of their political parties, all candidates must answer those questions honestly, politely and with respect while standing on a voter's doorstep? Yeah. Well, Mr. Speaker, the, uh, the Honourable Lady makes an excellent point, and I wholeheartedly agree with her. The, these are important questions. Voters deserve to have clear and straightforward answers to them, uh, and I hope that she can continue to put her campaign forward. She'll have my full support, and I hope in the local elections we can debate these issues in the way that they should be. Obviously, local elections coming up in May. I mean, part of the problem, uh, Tim, is that th th this is th the trans question is so complicated. There aren't clear and straightforward answers. Uh, no, there aren't, and I don't think most people follow the, you know, um, I'm loath to say the ins and the outs of it, but, um, you know, that's what we're talking about, yeah. and it's just, um, it's difficult, isn't it? Um, it's not one that lends itself to sort of sloganising, um, but often it's one that is reduced to it. Um, Sunak's answer could be loosely translated as, if you wish to stand as a Conservative, you'd, you'd be more than welcome. Although uh, I had a conversation with a uh, prominent Conservative MP a couple of weeks ago who said he was really struggling to find people to even stand uh, for the Conservatives. That's why we spent um, half term week trying to rustle up candidates. So. There we are. Uh, lovely stuff. I feel like we've covered a lot of ground there. Uh, Lava, thank you very much for that. Lava Spit, what time what can people get you in, the, you in their inboxes? 2.30. 2 30. Uh, Lava will be there with the Red Box PMQ's unpacked email in case you can't get enough of it. Um, that's only available to uh, Time subscribers, of course. You know what to do. Go to the thetimes.co.uk. If you subscribe uh, right now, you can get four months for a pound. Just a pound, but it only lasts till Friday. And then you can have as much Patrick Maguire and Lara Spirit in your inbox as you like. Right, up next, we're going to find out. We were talking on the show yesterday about France, this summit, and Richie Sunak, Emmanuel Macron. We ended up talking about the Bayo Tapestry because when Theresa May hosted Emmanuel Macron, they did a deal to share the Bayo Tapestry. So we're going to try and find out where is it and why has it not come to the UK yet. We'll do that next. It's Matt Jolly on Times Radio with NetWealth. For a clear review of your financial world, go to netwealth.com. Times Radio Breakfast with Asma Mir and Stig Abel. Rishi Sunak is off to France on Friday. Will he pull off another diplomatic coup? Andrew Riley will tell us what's got the Times letter writers going this week. We won't mention his post bag. <laughs> You just have. And Nicky Morgan and Peter Hitchens are our panellists. Times Radio Breakfast with Asma Mir and Stig Abel. Tomorrow.